The grim story of Kenya Mange. Crime against women has only increased with each passing moment. They are not considered entirely safe almost anywhere today, and some crimes happen so often in such common places that hearing their stories afterward leaving a chill down your spine. And one such story is of a 19-year-old girl Kenya Mange living in Denver when things went terribly bad, leading her to lose her life in a gruesome way. So if you want to know the whole truth about what happened, watch this video until the end. Here we begin. Almost 11 years ago in April of 2011, it was reported by a couple that their daughter, a 19-year-old girl named Kenya Mange, had gone missing. She had gone clubbing the night before this with her friends in a club named 24K Lounge, like a normal young adult in her city. She wasn't involved in any criminal activities and has been very kind, caring and considerate since she was a kid. So, when the recent high school graduate student vanished in thin air after that day, it was a major shock to everyone. Let's start from the beginning. On March 31st, Kenya and her friends decided to go out for drinks in a club. They were not legally drinking age at 19, so they used their fake IDs to go inside the club. Kenya's parents, Maria and Tony, had no idea she had a fake ID. Their daughter was always very responsible. She had been a bright kid and passed with brilliant grades. She chose broadcasting as her major at a local college. Now, coming back to the scene, the group had a few drinks in the club and became drunk. Kenya needed to go to the washroom, so she excused herself from the group and apparently never returned to the table. She somehow ended up outside the club without her cell phone, keys, or purse, which was at the table when her friends were waiting for her. But when she did not return, they thought she must have gone home and forgotten her belongings because she was drunk. When she had not returned home, her boyfriend, who she shared an apartment with, got worried. The next morning, he texted Kim, Kenya's sister, asking her if she would go back to their place instead. When Kim replied that Kenya hadn't shown up at their place, Louis called her parents and they filed a missing report. In the afternoon that day, the two girls she had gone out with brought her belongings back to her place. And there was a message from an unknown number on Kenya's phone that said it was from a guy named Travis, who had given her a lift last night in his van and he was asking her if she reached home okay. So Tony called the number, but no one picked up. The next day when he finally called back, he said that he had told them that he had seen Kenya outside the 24K lounge in the early morning hours, about 2.30 a.m., where she was talking to a homeless man. So Travis offered her help, and Kenya accepted it because she was drunk. On her way, Kenya wanted to smoke, so they stopped at the nearby gas station. Unfortunately, it was closed. So Kenya wandered off with an Asian-looking man who was smoking. So Kenya asked him for a cigarette, and they started having a conversation, after which they wandered off today. He said he didn't know where Mongi went after that. This was the last time he saw her. So initially, the police started looking for this Asian man, but did not find any lead. And although both Tony and the police suspected Travis and thought the story didn't sound right, he had a strong alibi, and they could not put charges against him. However, seeing Travis's long history with crimes, which first started when Travis was only 17 years old, the police tried to make him confess to being involved with Kenya's disappearance but did not succeed. A few months later, Travis was arrested for assaulting Lydia Tillman, a 30-year-old woman, and when he was taken into custody for the crime, he also admitted to killing Kenya to escape the death penalty and explained how he picked her up from outside the bar and she passed out in his van. Seeing that she was drunk, he took advantage of her. When Kenya woke up and tried to fight him, he strangled her to death and buried her body in a deep grave the next day. As a result, Travis Forbes was penalized with life imprisonment for committing first-degree murder. This is all about Kenya's story, but we'll be back with another intriguing video soon. So stay tuned and subscribe to our channel. If you liked today's video, then press the like and share button. Thank you for watching.